Today, we're gonna to talk about seven deadly mistakes to avoid when running portable generators to back up power to your home. A few of them are common knowledge, but others may be things that we just don't think about that are actually quite dangerous. I've even made a few of these mistakes myself, and the last two on the list are actually quite common. So let's jump right into it. So the next time you lose power, you, your family, and your pets will stay safe. Number one, never run a generator inside a building. That includes garages, barns, sheds, basements, and even crawl spaces. Most of us know this one because we know that carbon monoxide is a deadly gas. But still, in the United States, 2,100 people die every year from carbon monoxide poisoning, and on average, 85 of them are from portable generator use. Now, I doubt any of us are going to run a portable generator in our living rooms, but what we don't always think about is that open door or window where the cord's running through, or maybe we're running the generator out in the garage with the doors open, thinking that that's adequate ventilation. Carbon monoxide is a deadly, odorless, colorless gas, and it diffuses evenly throughout a room. We won't know it's there, so how do we stay safe? Always run a generator outside. Place the generator well away from any open doors or windows, and that includes garage doors, basement, and crawl space doors as well. And install battery-powered carbon monoxide detectors in your home to alert you of any dangerous levels of gas. And number two, never run your generator near combustible materials. Now, I know this sounds like another obvious one, but I saw someone nearly catch their house on fire with a portable generator. The generator exhaust was pointing towards the house and only about two feet away. It melted about six square feet of his vinyl siding, but luckily the house didn't catch on fire. Portable generators get hot, especially after they've been running for hours. So remember, always place the generator well away from the home or any other combustible material and always be conscious of the direction of the exhaust. In number three, Never backfeed an outlet in your home. Some people will alter an extension cord and plug one end into the generator and the other end into an outlet in their home. This practice is dangerous for a few reasons. It creates a suicide cord, more about that in a minute. It presents an electrocution risk for utility workers and neighbors served by the same utility transformer. It also bypasses some built-in household circuit protective devices that keep you and your family safe. It's best to have a qualified electrician install a safe and reliable method for you to connect your generator to your home. And number four, never use a suicide cord. A suicide cord is a cord with two male ends. These are dangerous because when one end of the cord is connected to power, the blades on the other end are exposed and energized, creating a shock or an electrocution hazard. People who use these have to be very careful about the order they're connected and the order the breakers are turned on and off. It would be very easy to make a dangerous mistake, or even worse, maybe a child comes into contact with one, which would be a disaster. These are often used as a cheap DIY method for connecting home generators. I've replaced many of them over the years. What often happens is a 30 amp receptacle is connected to a power panel and it back feeds a two pole breaker like this 30 amp dryer circuit. When power is lost, one end of the power cord is connected to the generator and the other end will back feed the panel through the receptacle. This is usually done without an interlock between the main breaker and the generator breaker as well. Like before, this type of connection presents an electrocution risk for utility workers and neighbors served by the same utility transformer. So not only is a suicide cord dangerous, but the connection method is dangerous as well. That's why they're illegal and they should never be used. And number five, never disconnect power cords that are supplying loads. Even with a legal generator connection with a recessed male inlet box, an interlock kit, a cord with male and female ends, you should still always open the generator breaker prior to connecting or disconnecting the power cords from the generator or from the home. When power connections are under load, they arc when you connect 
or disconnect them. This arcing is dangerous and it can damage the generator, the receptacles, plugs, and any loads connected to the generator as well. I always make my connections with the generator breaker turned off and while the generator is not running. In number six, never connect to a wet generator. Most of the time, power outages occur during stormy weather and keeping the generator out of the rain or snow is counterintuitive to keeping it outside and away from the home like we talked about earlier. So unless we have some sort of open-sided carport or a roof built over our generator, this one is going to be a challenge. It is recommended that you keep your generator dry, but if this isn't possible, I can tell you a few safety precautions that I take when using my generator out in the elements. I keep my generator on high ground. I never run the generator in standing water or in a low area that could become flooded. I always connect my power cord before starting the generator. I connect the male end to the generator and then the female end to the generator inlet receptacle. It's important when you do this that the generator breaker in your power panel is turned off because a generator cannot start into load. Then I start my generator, let it warm up, and follow my switching procedure to back up my home. When I disconnect my cord, I first open my generator breaker at the power panel. I shut down the generator engine so that there's no power at the receptacles. Then I disconnect the cord from my generator inlet box and then from the generator. Having no power at the generator when connecting and disconnecting is safer, especially during wet weather. In number seven, never fuel a running generator. Like I mentioned earlier, generators get really hot. Spilled gas could easily ignite when contacting hot engine parts. A spark from the generator connections could also ignite gasoline vapors causing fire or explosion. It's easy to get impatient and fuel a generator while it's running, but it's extremely dangerous. This is what I do to stay safe when fueling my generator. First, I open my generator feed breaker in my home power panel. Next, I turn off the generator and let it cool down for several minutes. Once it's cooled down, I fuel the generator. Then I start the generator back up, let it warm up for a few minutes, and follow my switching procedure to reconnect backup power to my home. I also make sure to store the gas can well away from the running generator. In next week's video, I'll be installing a 30 amp backup generator feed with an inlet box and an interlock kit. After that, I have a new, really cool battery power station that I'll be connecting and load testing. So be sure to subscribe and hit the bell so you won't miss those videos. I'll let YouTube recommend a video right here for you to watch next. I'm John from Backyard, Maine. I'll see you on the next one.